Benvenuto a Freia Pesaro. E, um, qual è il punto di partenza storico dell'Axis Syllabus, questo approccio al movimento che hai creato e uh, che cos'è? Uh, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Um, well, the Axis Syllabus began um, officially, let's say, in 97. I was teaching at a festival in Essen that was mostly for ballet dancers and had a revelation about the use of physics and undulations. Especially in that context, it was flagrant because um, ballet dancers tend to organize their bodies and also their concepts of the body in straight lines. And um, I arrived in class with a series of diagrams and schematics about uh, where the body could articulate and how it could channel kinetic energy. And uh, that was the beginning of the confusion. Okay. And the dancers uh, were not very happy about this. They wanted to learn something more aesthetically oriented. Mm -hmm. And um, so I began to address a larger community. But that was really the, maybe the, that was the official beginning. Although I think that um, the Axis Syllabus is really the brainchild of many other uh, revolutionary approaches to conceiving of the, the body. Among them, and maybe probably the most important, was contact improvisation. And the progenitors of contact improvisation who um, already dismantled so many uh, rigid ideas about what dancing was. E quindi l'Axis Syllabus può essere definito come una, una, una piattaforma open source di uh, strumenti uh, fisico-anatomici. Qualcosa, qualcosa altro da aggiungere? Um, yes, well, no, that's it, really. It's often confused with um, a performance style or a movement vocabulary or um, an aesthetic direction, but it's none of those. It's uh, literally a, a dictionary or a compendium, an archive of um, clinical references to how the body functions and also empirical references to practice, different kinds of practice, so that it provides um, a, a means of um, getting an overview about the historical treatment of the body and its capabilities. Um, and the whole idea is to give the tools to people um, who are doing things, anything, whatever you do, to have tools with which to compare uh, your practice with others, um, to um, compare your history with uh, collective notions about how the body functions. E la pedagogia, quanto è importante nell'insegnamento di questo di questo approccio? It's very important uh, because how information is transmitted colors uh, your associations. So, um, on the one hand, the community that uh, conveys the Axis Syllabus attempts to, to do that in a manner that is democratic, that respects all the individuals in the classroom, including the teacher, um, that provides, uh, well, instead of instruction and drill, to um, provide examples that then serve as uh, reference points for dialogue and experimentation and uh, eventually I'll also creativity. And then on the other hand, um, there's a, a constant dialogue about ethics, about how this information uh, could or should be used in a society that's working um, to mitigate different forms of violence. And um, also with the concern about how power is managed.
how power and privilege are managed in a society. Which I think is, that goes without saying in any circumstance where people are teaching other people. I don't think the Axis Syllabus community has um, an original ethic. Um, we, we've studied, for example, the uh, American Association of Teachers bylaws, and they're pretty much the same. Um, to transmit uh, information without regard to class, sex, credo, sexual preference, skin color, um, to respect the individual regardless of any of these things. And um, yeah, maybe also that the community um, does not uh, uh, openly espouse one particular spiritual direction or, um, or philosophy. That the idea is to focus on um, enhancing the health and strength and vitality of the people who are practicing and then they can decide what they would like to believe in. It's not a... we don't police uh, what people believe in. Whether or not they do drugs or whether or not they have multiple partners or whether they believe in, in this God as opposed to another. And it's the same with um, different kinds of movement. So we're not uh, policing whether or not people do yoga or ballet or breakdance or throwing pots and pans at the wall or the, the kind of movement that people do is, is really up to them. So in a way it's a kind of laic state of movement. That it's non-secular and um, provides an open context for the comparison and exchange and, and also therefore guarantees the variety. Grazie. E un'ultima domanda per quello che riguarda qual è lo stato attuale di, di questa comunità internazionale che tu hai sostenuto e sostieni. Right now it's expanding and it's expanding at an alarming rate actually. Um, we are losing the overview. Um, until three years ago or four years ago um, it was a small intimate uh, group that met once in a while and we could all fit in one room and uh, uh, we didn't know how many other people were interested. Now there's uh, 5,000 people on our mailing list and um, there's 40 people waiting to be certified and 25 already certified and there's many 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 more people who are writing to me every day, who are coming to class, who are interested in being certified and it's really burgeoning beyond uh, beyond anyone's ability to have an overview. We have groups in Africa, in Brazil, in Japan, in Russia, in Austria, in Germany, in Belgium, in France, in, and I don't know where. California. California, Canada, etc. And, and there's no way to coordinate uh, or, or integrate the different cultural values or even uh, communicate, uh, considering all the languages and custom. Um, so it's, a, it's really a problem, actually. But I guess it's a welcome problem. You know, it's, it's what I wanted. I wanted it to, to spread, and that's the important thing. It's spreading, and um, I'm sure that eventually there'll be different groups, and they'll fracture, and they'll have different leadership, and they'll take on different cultural uh, notions of how to organize and, and uh, the management of privilege and so on. And I won't be able to always say, you know, well, I think that it should be like this. Grazie mille, Frey. Qua dalla Palla di Pomodoro. Salutiamo. Grazie a Lara. Thank you, Lara. Thank <laughs> you.